Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Silver Screen Dudes. My name is Nico Luro, as always, and I am joined today by the star, the lead actress of Neil Marshall's Duchess, Charlotte Kirk. How are we doing, Charlotte? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, here in the UK, slightly grey weather, but apart from that, I'm, I'm doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slightly grey weather, such is the case of the UK, right? Um, listen, and... I had such a such a blast watching this film. Um, I, I mentioned you off camera just a moment ago. It's the second time I've seen you in in less than a month. This Bermondsey Tales. I just I just want to talk a little bit about what your career is going through at the moment. But speaking specifically about Duchess, when I finished watching this movie, I sat back in my chair and I thought that is the perfect combination of bloody and charming. It's bloody charming. How much yeah. of that informed your performance, which was hyper violent and equally kind of you know confident and charming i really 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 appreciate that yeah it's um my previous films that i co-wrote and produced have been very very different um very genre based horror um and kind of action sci-fi so to do this kind of film um i'm just so so excited for people to see it and it's getting a great, the trailer is getting a great response. So I'm, I'm hoping that the people are going to love it as much as um, they love the trailer. So fingers crossed. Let's see. I think I, I would struggle to believe how people wouldn't, wouldn't like this film, to be honest. But so uh, speaking about genres, which you just referenced now, actually. So traditionally within kind of these, I guess we can call it a gangster film, specifically a British gangster film. Female yeah. roles have been very, very minimalist. You know, I look at things like the female role, which was non-existent in things like Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, or even more recently, like in The Gentleman, the female role was there, but very much serving the men. And then I look at what you've done in Bermondsey Tales, where I initially thought, oh, OK, it's another gangster film where the women have been marginalized. And then the plot twist happened and all the power went with the women. And then we escalated it into this one. And it's like, oh, this isn't just women are in the lead uh, women are in the, the women are in the picture you're in the lead of list that this is your damn movie and mm -hmm. it completely tricks you doesn't it because it's like you're kind of the love interest then the flips yeah. the, the script flips and it's like this is all about you so and it, it's so interesting to see what you've been going through with this so can, can you tell me how like speak a bit about how proud you are about what you've done with these two movies and how you see the genre moving forward after this this impact that you've clearly left on it yeah i mean it's it's very different um as i said like my my previous films have been very very different to this one and my my director co-writer we were sitting there one day and we were like so what do we want to do next and we were like don't we just we just love the the, the 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 classic gangster movies you know that as you mentioned the lock stock goodfellas scarface was a, one of the biggest inspirations departed but they're all men like wouldn't it be cool to have a woman mm. boss but wouldn't it even be better to have like a, so a gangster movie today a woman boss and i i feel like I, I haven't seen that before like that would be so so cool and then that's kind of how it was conceived really and um and then we just kind of went from there. So I know I'm 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 so 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 proud of it. I couldn't be more proud of it. It was a long time in the making. We wrote it in 2018 and we shot it in oh, wow. 2022. So, um, but I, I I couldn't I couldn't be more proud of it. And I just hope that. And, and also, it's not your typical run of the mill action film that you just see so yeah so many now on Amazon and Netflix it's it's just like it's it's got layers to it it's it's mm. about portrayal and love and power and it's everything and I think that's what great gangster movies have like Godfather is about family like that's what yeah. makes them interesting it's not just a action movie it's got layers and substance to it so I'm hoping even though she's a bit of an anti anti-hero anti-heroine I think I think you're still rooting for her oh yeah 100 percent. also really fun that you mentioned Scarface the moment I saw the tiger I was like ha Tony Montana <laughs> I know exactly where that's come from <laughs> um so let, let me ask you this so no blowing smoke I thought you were fantastic in this film um yeah. can you 
can you but you, yeah you had this perfect kind of balance of like vulnerability and confidence but also a little bit of crazy especially in act three you had that right balance of crazy how did you prepare to convey these wide range of of emotions um i do have a process i you know obviously being the writer so i co-wrote it mm. but then after that i kind of switched that off and was like right now i'm looking at this as an actress with a fresh pair of eyes how am i going to do this so um, I have a great acting coach, Susan Batson, who's out of New York, and she's just absolutely incredible. I've done um, this is my third film with her now. Um, and just kind of my own process of connect, being able to connect to each scene. You know, some things like I have an experience that Duchess has experienced, so I have to, you know, tap into some emotions, or if I haven't experienced it, then imagine it so every scene every film is very very different and a very very different process I mean Duchess I had to learn to box in this one uh that mm. was very fun I never really done boxing before this so um that was great really and, you know yeah 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 no so uh yeah I could have fooled me <laughs> Oh, no, you throwing in the ring. I was like, oh, okay, she boxes for fun. I, if you told me that you'd done it for years, I would have been like, yeah, cool. I'd buy that. No, no just a few, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks prep, a couple of weeks with the stunties. Great stunties, though, so that always helps. <laughs> how, hard, how, hard was she, how hard was she hitting you during the, during the scene in the movie? How much of that was acting versus her actually walloping you? Well, I can't say, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the beauty about movie making, right? Movie magic. <laughs> movie magic, Smoking good it. answer. I love <laughs> it. Uh, you were talking about your creative process now. Can you describe how it's evolved over time? Yeah. So, in fact, I would say this year I have been the most relaxed and most... Um, when I did my first kind of leading role in The Reckoning, which was a drama and it was very, very heavy, I was very, I had the script and I wanted to stick by the script. And then if the director changed anything, it would kind of knock me off a little bit. And I've learned now, especially the two films that I just shot, which were very, you know, changing and working with some phenomenal actors, I learned that, oh, okay, like, go there prepared, turn up to set prepared, but know that things will change. I just come back from New Mexico where I was filming Dolph Lundgren with Dolph Lundgren and Michael J. White. It was amazing. And oh, cool. I, just like seeing how super cool they are. Like, okay, so this is a scene, but what can we do with it? I'm like, isn't this the scene? And they're like, it was just very interesting. So I've definitely learned how to just follow my instincts and my gut. Mm. That usually never fails you. As, you, as Scarlett says in the movie, woman's intuition, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, a lot of time creatives talk about, you know, how real people have, have influenced either the characters they write or maybe influenced their performances even. Um, mm -hmm. is, is there anyone or who were the inspirations for you when, when embodying Scarlet? Um, it's, I, I, I think... In terms of performance-wise, I love one of my I mean, best actors. Favorite, my favourite actors, one of them is Al Pacino in Scarface and how he just, it was all out, you know. And this was the whole context of the movie that we didn't want to make a vanilla run-of-the-mill run film. We wanted to be out there, you know, as, as big and outrageous as possible. So that's what I wanted to do with her. So inspiration of, you know, all these incredible gangsters that you've seen in previous films like Al Pacino and Scarface but make make it more really outrageous and, and not being scared to go there not being scared to go quite big with her because if it's truthful and it comes from a truthful place and it's okay you know mm. if you go big sometimes it's better to do usually it's best to do less less is more but in Duchess case like towards like the, as you said like the last act it's it's pretty out there <laughs> yeah yeah oh no she she does go full tony montana on everyone justifiably but like exactly yeah, it, it, it that that flip between act two and act three i was like wow we've dialed it up here oh, lots of fun 
Um, you know what? It's very important because, you know, a lot of these revenge films, within five minutes, you don't care about the characters, you don't know the characters. Mm. Oh, and you've got to be rooting for them. A big yeah. inspiration for this film, another one was Man on Fire by Denzel Washington. That, yeah. that build up and then something happened, then the revenge happened, and you just cared so much more about them, you know? So that was another inspiration. So we've clearly got the same sensibilities then with films. You know, you mentioned Scarface. It's one of my faves. You've talked about Man on Fire. And literally the way that Tony Scott directed Man on Fire, I could see a lot of that in here too. Um, Very nitty gritty, very visceral. The choice of the choice of color palette being used in certain scenes, like that scene where you stab the guy in the hand at the beginning of the third act. I was like, I mean, this feels like it's out of a Tony Scott movie. That, no. Did you think Neil Marshall had a bit of had a bit of input in that as well, or was was Man on Fire also one of his influences? Do you think? Yeah, it's definitely one of his in, in, in inspirations. Um, definitely, yeah, he mentioned that, and we watched we watched you know Scarface and Man on Fire and a lot of these films during prep as well to inspire yeah. us. <laughs> Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so it's actually your third time working with Neil Marshall. You've done the Reckoning, I believe, the Lair. That's the one I haven't seen, but The Lair and now Duchess. So two out of three. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, there's one what? more. And then, uh, in fact, after Duchess, oh, we shot one more. Yes, we shot Compulsion last year that's coming out next okay. year, which is very, very different altogether. It's an erotic thriller, actually. But, of course, it's got, you know, Neil Marshall stamp, so it's got lots of blood and killing, and that's kind of the backdrop. The backdrop is a serial killer in, in, in mortar. But it's it's definitely an erotic thriller as well. So, yeah, very very different. <laughs> uh, you, you you've yeah you've you've answered my last question there. I heard about this erotic thriller, so that's also with Neil Marshall. Very interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say then four movies. You're his muse now officially, right? You are to Neil Marshall what Uma Thurman was to Tarantino, I guess. What's a day like working with him? What what's uh, what's a day in the life of uh, being one of Neil Marshall's actors like? Um, well, I mean, in the writing process, it's great because I think we're a great combination when it comes to writing because he comes at the project as a writer director. Uh, I come at the idea as a writer, uh, sorry, as a, an actress. So it's a great combination, a great contrast. Um, and then, uh, you know, as a director, he's wonderful. He's just very chilled, very, very chilled, makes you feel very comfortable, allows you to be free mm. and make choices. So, yeah, he's he's awesome to work with. He's so so great. And then um, yeah, then I've got two other films coming out next year that I'm super excited about. One with Dolph Lundgren and Michael J. White, which is pretty much a full on action film. Um, awesome. But I'm very, yeah, it's it's a fun one. And then um, another horror actually um, with Barbara Crampton, Lynn Shay, um, mm. Jesse Metcalf. It's called The Possession of Gladstone Manor. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, I've heard, I've seen the poster for this come out already. I think um, Emilia mentioned to me that this was coming out, and she, because I'm a big horror fan, and she said, "Keep your nose to the ground. There's something big coming." It when yes, so yes, that's, that's shot that's, at, that's wrapped, has it? That's wrapped. Yes, that's coming out next year. Yeah, that was awesome. That was such a such a cool shoot, and I'm um, I'm very excited about that one as well. So, yeah, yeah, it was a great Get cast. The feeling. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, I get the feeling this may not be our last time talking, Charlotte. Sorry? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Between, yeah, <laughs> cause you, I get all of these movies I keep on being forwarded, I, I, there's like a consistency. I'm like, eh, Charlotte Kirk's in this again. All right, cool. Good times in our head. Listen, at this point, <laughs> they're going to have to cast you in the next Expendables movie if you keep doing movies like this. That could be pretty cool. That could be, oh, you definitely watch The Lair. Then you'll see pretty much action start to finish. I love like that. The yeah. I what, would, like that one. what would you say? Um, what would you say the most challenging part of this production was? Filming it was very challenging. Um, we shot it during COVID. I got COVID. We had to close down mm. for a few days. Neil got COVID. Uh, it was just one of those challenging shoots. Um, time compressed, budget, you know, the usual. I mean, no movies easy, really. But this one was, I would say, extra challenging um ambitious on the budget we had but um i think overall you know it, it it shows that a lot of love and passion and dedication went into it so and fun 
and it was also fun making. I mean, the cast is great, you know, Stephanie mm. Beecham, John Pertwee, Philip Winchester, an incredible cast. I mean, I've loved Sean Pertwee since his first Neil Marshall movie. I think Dog Soldiers is such a hidden gem of a film. It still shocks me that more people haven't seen that. Um, It's funny. Do you know what? You talk about budget. If there was any negative I could kind of poke at the movie, there were one or two shots where I was like, ah, time and budget were not helping this scene. Like that scene where you've arrived in Tenerife and you're looking out and you get that big sweeping shot out over the mountain. You can clearly (laughs) tell that was meant to be like clear, beautiful day, either sunrise or sunset, and you got foggy day. And I was like, yeah, okay, they didn't have time for a reshoot here. Yeah, yeah, that was really, that was very annoying. Yeah, we definitely won't shoot back in Tenerife again, but the locations were nice and yeah, every place has its ups and downs. (laughs) (laughs) But overall, I think it worked well for this film. Yeah. Listen, it lent that that kind of fogginess, whether planned or unplanned, you know, smoke and mirrors magic of Hollywood, as you said, but it kind of lent itself to the vibe of the movie quite well. Yeah. You know, I've true, seen, true, yeah. True. This is true. I've seen yeah. a million and one pretty sunset shots over a cliffside. I've, it was almost kind of jarring in a good way to be like, oh, foggy shot. You don't see that a lot. Is that like yeah. meant to reflect the characters' minds or something? And I was like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll like, what's to, come? what's to come? Yeah. Metaphorically. Yeah, this is true. That is why we did it. You, that, you, you, exactly. You, you it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke and mirrors, right? Um, exactly. All right. Okay. So, the my, my last question was going to ask you a bit about this this erotic thriller you've got coming up, but you've kind of touched on it already. So, I mean, let, I just want to get my audience to to know you a little bit. I mean. Can you tell us some of your favorite movies and your favorite actors? And here's a fun one. They do this in GQ a lot. A movie you've seen that you don't think enough people have seen? Boys Don't Cry. Oh, it's a goodie with Hilary Swank. That's a good damn movie. One of my favorites. That is a seriously good movie. Cautionary tale, that one. Very, very depressing. Which one? Boys Don't Cry. It's a very depressing movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. The ending is yeah very very difficult, but I, yeah, I think that's a brilliant movie. Um, yeah, there's so many. There's so many. I have so many favourites, <laughs> but per genre, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't just do one film overall. I have like favourite films per yeah, depending on the genre. No, let's hear them. I want to hear what what makes up your your loves your loves for cinema. In in a hor- in horror, we'll start horror. Okay, horror. It would be the thing, oh, Alien. Shit. Yeah, The Shining. Mm-hmm. Aliens. Of course. Uh, and then, like American Horror Story, just a TV show. All the seasons are just insane. Um, and then, if it was gangster, I mean, poof, Scarface number one. Um, Thank you so much for saying that. We can we can be friends now. We can absolutely be friends. <laughs> Scarface of Scarface over Godfather any day for me. A hundred percent. Scarface, The Departed, Casino. Yes, Sop- thank you. Sopranos. sopranos. Mm. Love the Sopranos. Um, mm-hmm. Layer cake. Um, ah. And then you got the. Classic. I love as well, like Gone with the Wind, On the Waterfront, Casablanca. Mm. You know, um, just the classics. So, so different, always different ones, really, depending on what mood I'm in. <laughs> you got any uh, big movie blind spots, like uh, a great movie that everyone talks about that you're like, oh, I haven't seen it yet? I haven't seen the new Man Max movie. What, Furiosa? I haven't seen that, which is kind of, yeah, I know. I uh, haven't seen Twister yet. I want to see Twister. Okay, what, well, the original Twister from, what, 97? No, 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 the one right now, it's in cinemas. I haven't oh, right now. One. No, I mean sort of like maybe circa 20 plus years ago. Like the the stuff which, by, like, for instance, my the guy who runs this channel with me still to this day has not seen Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, bro, it's been 20 years. Like, what's happening? What's happening with wow. that? Wow, yeah, that's... Ooh. 
I don't know. What film have I seen as a classic? Or like, um, that's a really difficult question. I don't know. Yeah. And it's one of those things where you, it always, I, what I found, I asked this to Michael as well. It always makes people do a bit of soul searching. It's like, because you always think you've seen a lot of movies and then you kind of dig deeper. Like, for instance, I, until last year, had never seen The Wizard of Oz, you know? And it's oh, my like, God. You know what? I, haven't, I haven't seen The Wizard of Oz. There we go. We found one. <laughs> bad as well that's really bad I, 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 and i've been meaning to and every time something happens or i don't know i know i will i will see that before our next it's, interview <laughs> it's always the case i love that uh well charlotte that is that's um that's all i have to ask on this occasion i will say this yeah. the duchess is one of my favorite films that i've seen this year i can't oh. wait to be allowed to release the the review this coming monday and let people know that this is one to put on their radar watch it watch it in the cinema for christ's sake stop you know go and support these movies everyone stop waiting for yeah. stuff to come to screaming go and support good art we need art supported yeah. and this is and it's, in cinemas. it's going to be in the cinemas on the 9th of august it's going to run yep. in cinemas for a week and so yes that would be amazing that would be it's go a good movie you'll enjoy it, it. Yes. Oh, you absolutely well. I can confirm this. And Charlotte, just before we leave, where can people find you online if they want to follow you? Uh, I'm on Instagram, Charlotte Kirk Official, and my Facebook as well, Charlotte Kirk. Beautiful. Charlotte Kirk, thank you so much for joining me today on the Silver Screen Dudes. I'm sure we'll be speaking again. The Duchess is fantastic. <laughs> Review will be coming out Monday, the 29th, on the channel. I'll see you guys all then. Charlotte, thank you again so much. Thank you.